We get in the cell, it gets a little heated, and we get the wrestling. Words were going back and forth between you two, and now you guys are about to fight. Yeah. Yeah. I, re I clearly remember, like, getting into it, and then I tried to pick him up and slam him, and I thought I was gonna, because... Adventure time here on After Prison Show, and we're going to be doing something really awesome today. And what exactly that is, well, I think I'll let Dave tell you. What's going on, everybody? We're about to go and see a good friend of mine that I met in jail. Not this last time, but the big time. The first time I went and did, when I went and did six years, my first celly, his name was... Terry and me and Terry became really good friends and he also has done a lot of prison time but he's doing good now and we're gonna go see him and we're gonna make a day of it are you excited to see Terry I know you guys probably have tons of stories of times of you two being together but is, is this an exciting thing for you Dave it is he's a really good friend of mine and I'm, I'm excited to bring him on and introduce him to y'all I think that Y'all really get a kick out of Terry. I think you'll really get a kick out of all of us, you know, together. Well, I think today's going to be a pretty awesome day. And I can't wait to meet Terry and hear just what he's got to say about spending, what did you serve, a year in a cell with this guy? A little over a year. Probably like 15 months in a cell. I can't wait to hear these stories. See that white truck? Mm hmm That's his house? Yeah, that's his house. Wow, I have never seen, did you just kiss him? That's not a kiss, this is a love pet. This is for your wife. Ooh, yes, yes, that. Terry, say hi. Hi. That's all they get? That's all I get. Oh, I no, kiss I, you. I, that's right, I got a kiss in a, uh, in a hug, that was pretty awesome. You gotta... Oh, so this is the infamous Terry. That's me. You know, Dave had a lot of nicknames that he was calling you. Oh. Love bug. Oh, that's one. Sweet cheeks. Uh -huh. Sweet Sugar cheeks. Tits. Great bum splitter. <laughs> the great bum splitter. <laughs> so how's it feel uh, to be surrounded by the APS Army right now? I, I feel uh, at home. You know, we almost pulled you up like, um, what's that publisher's clearinghouse? Like where we're about to hand you the check. Oh, you, were you going to bring balloons? You just won. Five thousand dollars for life. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't. Dude, your dog wants to kill us. Yeah, that's Jordy. So Terry, first thing I want to say is thank you for having us in your home. Thank you for agreeing to do this video, and it's just a real pleasure to finally get a chance to meet you. Absolutely. Obviously, you know Dave pretty well. You guys spent an extensive amount of time locked up together. I mean, talk to me a little bit about how much time you guys would serve together. Um. Um, I, I want to say it was around 13 months or so. Better than a year. Yeah, better than a year. Around 13 months uh, in the same 8 by 10 <laughs> cage. So, with this thing. With Dude, this, this well, thing. Ho, 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 ho. This ain't... I'm... This is a roast Dave session is what you failed to realize, Dave. Oh, so y'all set this up. I thought I was the mastermind behind this video. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking evil villain. Uh, but you know, when you serve that amount of time with somebody, I mean, anything over a year, hell, it could even be six months. When you spend an extensive amount of time locked up in a cell with somebody, you most certainly get to know that person probably better than anyone in their damn family. That's, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's one of those, that, that's one of those things, major things that I took with me from, from the time that I've spent locked up. Uh, if you spend every waking hour with a person, you you're spending more time with the average person that, that the average person spends with their best friend or even their, their, their significant other at that matter. You know, you, you, you just can't get rid of that person sometimes. Literally, you can't get rid of them. Yeah, and, and no matter even if you're cool with this person, you become cool with this person, you become friends with them, there's going to be times where you guys absolutely annoy the living death out of each other. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a definite... I mean, 
anybody you spend that much time with, you know, there's finally you get to the point where, you know, it's like, dude. Leave me alone. Yeah, right? Can you get out of the cell for a little while? I've been looking at your face for a year straight. I mean, I've seen the man poop more than his wife has. Yeah, yeah. That's like, not I think maybe she's only seen me poop once. Me? One time. One time. My wife hasn't seen me poop at all, so you guys are doing better than me. Hey, it was a strong bond. <laughs> Some barriers need to... It takes time to break certain barriers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you guys would actually meet when you guys became cellmates. Yeah. Well, we met... I, I, I want to say... I was in a different cell at first, and then and we ended up getting moved into the cell together. And you know, I met him uh, probably on the poker table at first. Uh, so, yeah. what was your first impression of Dave? I mean, obviously, you know, when you first meet somebody, first impressions mean everything, especially when you're locked up. You're gonna get a sense of what this person is like. Talk to me a little bit about what it was like when you first met Dave. Yeah, well, my first impression of him, and my, mind you, at this point, I had already come home from a long stint. Before, so I already had developed uh, sort of a, a, a arms distance uh, technique when it came to new people, um, and he, he got past that arms distance pretty quick. Uh, just the personality, you know. He was my my first impression of him was, oh, he's young and a little crazy, but he's 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 funny, and funny gets you a long way. Absolutely. And Dave, what was your first impression of Terry? This dick just won all my money at the poker table. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was actually, when I came in there, there was a friend of mine that was in this um, pod that I'd, I'd known for a while, and he had been in there with Terry, and they were kind of cool. So my first impression of Terry was good people. Immediately, we Because went. he knew somebody that you had known, and that was a good friend of yours, so... Yeah, and, and it was immediately... You know, good people. But when we did a video uh, just a little while ago, and I don't know if Terry's had a chance to hear or see this video, you know, where we first started talking about Terry, you know, you mentioned to me how when you guys would first become cellmates, he was in your bunk, the bunk that you were supposed to be housed in. Yeah, he was in the bottom bunk. When and I came in, he was, when I came in, moved into the cell, he was asleep in the bottom bunk. Or so I thought he was asleep. And I was like, I was like, I remember saying to my friend, I was like, yeah, I hope he don't think he going to keep that bottom bump. And, <laughs> that and you bump. heard him saying that. Yeah, he, he rolls over and he's like, well, I don't know what you're going to do about it. And I was like, <laughs> I was just playing. <laughs> I was just playing, bro. Now, <laughs> now I was like, oh, uh, you heard that? Yeah, um, I'm medically assigned to that bottom bump, bro. <laughs> Here's the paperwork right here. I don't mean no harm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Terry, you're a big guy. You're about the same size as me. So, and Dave, you're, you're a little bit smaller. I was even smaller then. I was like 180, 175 probably at that time. Like 25 years old. Green. No, I won't green, but I was just... He was green. I was just obnoxiously careless. So you were in the way, basically. You were one of them guys that I was in just... the way? Would you say I was in the no, way? No, I wouldn't say you were in the Terry, way. Terry, honestly, was he in the way? Just no, no, no. no. <laughs> I wouldn't say he was in the way, but he was he was definitely stuck in the peripheral. Now, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get this all out on the table right now. Okay. What does that mean? Well, stuck in the peripheral. Well, peri peri that, that don't even Stuck come over yet. there. Oh, um, but, you know, you weren't... He was into everything. He was all over the place, and you really couldn't do anything without seeing him. Right, so he was definitely loud and obnoxious, and oh, yeah. he was... Okay, so I don't want to do this no more. Give me my ball, I'm going home. <laughs> Cody, can I get a ride? <laughs> we can get you an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're finishing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, Terry, you had mentioned that when you guys met, this wasn't your first rodeo, obviously. You just you had done a lot of time previous to this encounter where you would meet Dave. Tell me a little bit about your time in prison and, and what your history has been like with that. Yeah, um, I was uh, I was eighteen years old, and uh, I was going to uh, I was I was I was attempting to put all of my efforts into skateboarding, and I was I, I you know I could skate. 
and I was headed to a, a to a contest. There was a contest in North Carolina. I can't I can't recall what the name of it was, but at at that time, this was 1995. At that time, the it was it was sort of a big East Coast contest, um, and uh, we uh, myself and a couple of my buddies we went to a, a skate shop, and it ended up turning into I pulled out a gun and took a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so you robbed a skate shop. Yeah, I robbed a skate shop. And um, were you using drugs at this point? I mean, what was? I mean, yeah, I, yeah, but I wasn't. I wasn't like on drugs. You know, I mean, I was smoking. Uh, you know, I smoked weed, drank. You know, hung out, cut up. You know, but nothing. At that point, I I don't, I don't believe I'd ever even seen anything, any other type of drug other than weed and and and, uh, and alcohol. So what was the motive behind you robbing this place? Was it for money? Was it? I I, I uh. I'm, no, it wasn't money, not whatsoever. I don't even, uh, I don't even think I got any money. It was uh, skateboards. I needed a new setup. I needed, uh, you know, some clothes and, th and things like that to go to this this contest. And and uh, I, I just didn't have, I didn't have a job at the time. You know, I was, I just dropped out, of, dropped out of high school, um, and had no, nothing, nothing going, except, uh, except, um, you know, skateboarding. So. I, I guess I felt that uh, I was entitled to whatever I needed, whenever I needed it, and that's what led to me getting incarcerated. Um, and from that, from there, I uh, ended up like three days later. I ended up shooting myself in the hand with that same gun. So it's almost instant karma. Went to the hospital, had surgery done. Um, woke up with the detectives in the room, faked like I was still asleep. They left. I bounced. Um, the next day I was incarcerated. It was uh, September 18th, 1995, and uh, yeah, I didn't come home until September 6th, 2004. Wow, so, so you would end up doing about nine, ten years for this. Yeah, I ended up getting, I ended up getting, I want to say my total sentence was 16 and a half years. Uh, they suspended all but nine and a half, so technically on that time, at 85%, which is you know, the law here, uh, you would do around seven years and eight months, somewhere around there, and that's if you had your good time. Right. I, on the other hand, did not keep my good time and ended up doing nine years, six days. And we're gonna get into uh, a lot more about what would actually happen with you during that nine year sentence you would do for the robbery charge. We're gonna do that in, a, in an upcoming video because we actually wanna take you to the prison that you, one of the prisons where you served this time at, which is an absolute gladiator school. And we definitely want to hear some stories from you about that whole experience. But getting back to what we're talking about right here, it wouldn't be during the nine year sentence that you would meet Dave. It would be during another time. It was, it was a violation of probation. I violated my probation. I was living in Powhatan, uh, Virginia. And, uh, I was, I was, uh, Playing Call of Duty, I was uh, gaming with my with, with my buddies, and these guys these guys were good, and we we, we were seriously we seriously competed like MLG com competitions and, and and things like that, and we were in it, and uh, I lost my microphone, mind you, I was a half a bottle into uh, some wild turkey, so I get the uh, the idea, you know, I need a new headset, so I jumped in the Jeep and started driving to Walmart. Walmart's about 25, 30 minutes from where I was living. And ended up getting pulled over for DUI, and that was that's what led to me running into this guy. They uh, uh, sent me back to Virginia Beach to to uh, you know to see for my my capius, and that's when they you know put me in a I forgot what the pod was, and, and not important, but three D three D was that what it was? Yeah, and that's where I met this guy. And you know, before I continue with this whole thing about the two of you, I just got to say this first and foremost, you know, I know people are going to hear uh, the reasons for why you got locked up the first time robbing a skateboard shop uh, that would end up, you know, you serving nine and a half years for this or, or nine years and six days. And then you needing a new microphone or a new headset for Call of Duty and ended up this, you know, led to you getting a DUI. Your reasons for getting locked up are absolutely some of the craziest I've ever heard in my life. Like the initial thing leading to the bigger thing that would cause you to get locked up is just insane to me. Yeah, well, oh, I have two more. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I violated my probation five times. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and 
three of those five times were DUIs. Uh, and never in my own vehicle. It was always someone else's, someone else's whip, something else, was, something else happened. That person wasn't capable of, or I didn't feel they were capable of getting us anywhere safe. And of course... Uh, you yeah. weren't any better, obviously, by getting the DUIs. Obviously not. Getting back on track, I know we're leaving everybody with a major cliffhanger right here with like, oh my dun, god, dun, dun. I really want to hear what the hell Terry, what else could Terry have done besides, you know, needing a headset, going to Walmart, completely obliterated, and, you know, I know there's so much more to this, but let's get back on track right here and let's talk about the time that you spent locked up with Dave. You know, spending over a year locked in the same cell with somebody, there's going to be some good times and there's going to be some bad times. There's going to be times when you guys argue. There's going to be, you know, you're going to be getting to know this person probably better than anyone in their family or anyone that they know in their own personal life. But talk to me a little bit about, like, how you guys would actually spend your time together. How would you pass the time? We Do gambled a lot. Yeah, we gambled a lot. We, we sit up at nighttime writing rhymes. and What? Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Pump the brakes. What do you mean, writing rhymes? We would just write Rats. silly stuff. And uh, you were rapping as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God. You would just write silly stuff. Just, I mean, you got to entertain yourself, man. So what kind of stuff would you do? Like parodies of real songs or like stuff that? Oh no, no, it's just all all little dumb, you know, just dumb things. I wish I could remember some of some of what. I probably got that stuff in a bag somewhere. Do you, Mike? I'm trying to think of. There was one particular one that was really, I, I, thought, that, I thought it was a dude. I thought that thing was okay. And Do you remember was, what it was about? Man, it was d nonsense. It was just nonsense. Like stuff that you were seeing while you guys just, were locked up? No, just like tongue twisters. Oh, definitely that. Yeah, yeah I can't. Just I'm, talk. Yeah. Retarded. Yeah, I mean, I wish we we're gonna have to we're gonna have to expound upon this a little further, and hopefully, you've got some of this material because how classic would that be if we could? If we could get you guys on a track together, Dave and Terry. Oh, that'd be all right. <laughs> we could do that. Oh, definitely. Okay. But, so you guys gambled a lot. You guys were writing rhymes a lot, and I mean, basically just bidding. Look, just bidding. I remember. I remember one time. I don't remember how it came about. We were gambling. Either I was up or Terry was up on the poker table. And what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes you played credit games. You run you a know, tab. You run a tab. You know, till store day. It might be like a day or two before store day. So they'll run credit games and then on store day you pay. And I don't know if it was him or me. But, man, when we got, like, we got so tight that when we got, if he got commissary, I got commissary. If I got commissary, it was his commissary too. You know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't matter. There was like one bag. Right. Like You guys were that close. You shared. You ate together. Absolutely. You lose. If I'm up. On the poker table and he lost. Mm -hmm. Just wipe it. You know he don't owe nothing. You know what I'm saying? We're because you guys are almost working together to try to get the rest oh, of the Oh, we were. Oh, yeah. It was. Oh, yeah. Did you guys have like level? There was no, some. No, there was no. We didn't have. We, we didn't have any tells. Neither. We, we weren't. You know. That's that's one thing. You know. You don't cheat. Yeah. In you jail. don't cheat yeah. because it's going to lead to some major problems. It's definitely oh, it going to lead to some major problems. It don't. I don't. It uh, really almost did with this one but, guy. I don't remember his name, but it died. He really didn't want it because he knew it was going to be. You and him. Versus. Yeah, he was going to get jumped. So what was the... Let's talk about that real quick. He thought you guys were cheating and working together? No, he was just... Yeah, probably. Yeah, because we played... We, like, we, we did strategically position ourselves at the table according to who was at the table playing. So, and, and not that we had signs or tells, but that there's an un, uh, unspoken understanding that if, if I... Terry's said, betting... Oh. I'm a raise. <laughs> I'm a raise. I'm going to make him... Pay into that. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? So there's there are techniques involved that called, can boost that table, uh, boost it. that pot. Yeah, that you can push that pot hard, and then and that's you know what I really want to say. That's what spurred that on was because they were like, man, these two man, they're they're they're, they're swelling the pot. So you would bet the next guy would have to call. Dave would raise. Terry would probably raise after that. And Dave his, folds. And his and money's locked. Yeah. And, and, and it don't matter because if he wins, you, you got to still eat exactly. together. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. And that caused all occasion, but dude didn't want to. It just got to, you know, a bunch of barking. Lip wrestling. About it. Mm -hmm. What did you say? Lip wrestling? Lip wrestling. Yeah. And we're not kissing. Yeah, no. There's no kissing. No. There's no kissing. I mean, I did kiss him. When we yeah. pulled up, and that was actually pretty awkward. Some, some cell door gangstering. If you yeah, want, yeah. Yeah. Bar fighting. Keyboard gangsters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what, 
One of these times, Lynn, I don't remember if it was him who lost or I who lost, but somebody, you know, it's like he's up $40 at the poker table and I'm down 50 So, you know, he feels good about winning, but he still has to pay out 10 bucks. You know what I'm saying? So something was said, then I got smart, or it was opposite. I don't remember which direction it was. So you guys began arguing because you had lost your money and he was up. Yeah, and you know what, I really, now that, at first I thought it was him, but now I think about it, I think it was me because I get frustrated when I play poker and I start doing, betting stupid. And you're losing. Yeah, and I get angry. And I'm I, all in. And then yeah. now I'm getting angry because I'm like, yo. He's not I'm following the technique. Yes. I'm up 40, we're gonna eat. Why what are you are fucking you doing? Why are you messing this up, Dave? Right, so we get in the cell, it gets a little heated, and we get to wrestling. Words were going back and forth between you two, and now you guys are about to fight. Yeah. 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 I, I clearly remember, like, getting into it, and then I tried to pick him up and slam him, and I thought I was gonna, because he kind of just... Like, kind of let you? Yeah, but what he did was kind of jumped up on me and wrapped his legs around me. <laughs> and next thing I know, I'm like getting choked out on the ground. And <laughs> yeah, that's how that went down. Terry, tell me your side of this because obviously he was passed out. Dude, right, look well, how long his arms are. All right, well, he, he didn't go out. He didn't go out. I'm pretty sure he did not go out, but he wouldn't tap. I stretched him. Yeah, you know, and I, I stretched him, and as soon as I see, see, I was and no, I wouldn't tap. I, I was, I was kind of, you know, was, when the altercation actually starts, and, and with anybody, or at least with me, uh, you know, I'm like, oh man, here we go, this could be bad, and I wanted to keep him at a distance. And use my arms and my hands. Because you're tall and he's short and you know he's going to come in and try to shoot the cuff. And exactly. Try to, and try exactly. To come. And mind you, we're in a small box. It's like fighting in a phone booth. It's, it, not, it's a dangerous situation as well. Room. There's because metal, there's bunks, there's heads concrete floor. You know, there's no soft spot unless you get... On the mat. On the mat. And... Yeah, well, we end up... It's almost exactly how, that, how he was explaining... Uh, we're, we're, we're arguing, and then the argument turns into, well, what are you going to do? You know, well, what? What? And then there's people can hear what's going on. So now everybody's crowding yeah. around. Oh, look at David Cameron! Right. That's and, exactly. And it just got to the point where we got close enough to each other. I don't know if it was me that felt like this was going to happen, so I'm going to initiate it because I don't want to be stretched out on the floor. And uh, Like he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not... He, he come in, he came in, and... I was really, I was like, oh man, here we go. He's gonna, you know, I'm, I'm about to go for a ride. So I was like, well, look, I'm just gonna use his momentum. And I just, like you said, I just kind of leapt up in the air and just got all of, all I could get wrapped around him. And we, we, we end up on the floor and he, he let me get behind him. And that was, I was like, oh. Headlock. <sighs> yeah, done. It's, it's done. You know, I had the hooks in. And then I went, I'm just trying to pull my neck out. And, what, not, and what's going on as you're trying to pull your neck out? Terry's not not letting up at all. No. no, no. Were you I'll, saying anything to him at this point? Um, no, I was grunting. <laughs> he, you know, I was grunting because he's he's strong. You know what I mean? It was like it, it was like holding the greased pig. You know? <laughs> <laughs> was, you know and, and look, and mind you, we're you know, you get in a tussle like that. It only takes a good 30, 40 seconds before you're winded. Yeah. You know, and and I'm like, oh man, because. You know, in the position that we were in, he was on top of me. He had his back. I had his back though. So if I, if he were to have gotten out, I was almost one hundred percent sure I was going to get slugged. Yeah, because and he could have just turned around and that's around. That, that's it. And now he's on top of me, and now I got to figure out, you know, what towel I'm. I remember use to trying to. Blood I remember trying to scoot back and push his face into the wall, <laughs> but. It ended literally like. Did you get your head out of the headlock? I let go. He let go. He let go. I let go. And that was it. Yeah, I, I think we actually. Oh, he got him! He got him! He got him! I was like, <laughs> I was like, you're cooking dinner. <laughs> yep. and that was that like was there was no. That was and that's how I knew like there was something between us. You know, like good we friendship. Were t- yeah, because yeah. after oh. it was over, we were just like. That was stupid. Right. You know what I mean? Like, both of us had to face, like, yeah, you, you didn't want to do that, and neither did I. 
You know. Right. And were either one of you hurt after this? Like sore. My neck was sore from trying to pull out. Like the next day, I was like, Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming to the poker table. Give me a second. I'll make up coffee. Yeah. And my, <laughs> you my got I, I knew my my foot was kind of messed up. I hit the uh, I think I hit the bunk or something. The like ladder. That. You know, yeah, it was a ladder, <laughs> and it caught my pinky toe and my my second ring toe. Oh, I don't God. know. So yeah. it, the ladder went between yeah, your toes. It was, yeah, it was bad, man. And I was that that, that kind of hurt for a couple of days. So had. I, had I not had him in, you know, the way I had him, I think I might have taken that injury and been like, you know, I think day one, just from, <laughs> just from that toe, because it, man, I was limping for a good little bit. Yeah, there was, there was another fight actually between me and Terry. While you guys were serving time? No, 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 no. This was after, you know, he came home. I don't know what, like a year or two before me. Mm -hmm. And then, because I went on to serve my six-year sentence. And I think he came home, no, about two and a half years before me. Something like that. And um, I, did, I did two years on that one. Yeah. I ended up with two years for that. And you did six years. Five violation. Yeah. So even after all of that extra time that you would serve, you would come home and, and reconnect with, uh, with Terry. Yeah, I got, I got out and uh, I don't know how this happens. Facebook said, people you may know. And there he was. I was like, oh, snap. So I friended him. He hit me up. And immediately, you know, I went over, hung out. We drank some beer. And we had a good time. It was like... It so was, never was... Never was yeah. You know. So some friendships can be made and even in a place like jail. Good you know, friendships. Right. Too. It doesn't necessarily mean the people that you meet while locked up, not all of them are going to be horrible people. Yeah. Obviously, by the fact that you guys were able to, you know, come home and pick right up where you guys left off inside the cell with a, a busted pinky toe and a, a swollen neck. <laughs> <laughs> I got that swole throat. It's that python. What? Look. He kissed that muscle like you kissed his cheek when we pulled up. Woo! He's sexy. Look, so... Gay day. <laughs> <laughs> Look. So, it was like a 4th of July. Mm. We're going to his sister's house somewhere in Virginia. I'm driving. Well, it's, you know, we were making bad decisions, mm -hmm. so we decided to get drunk before and during the drive there. Mind you, this was like a two hour, it's, it's, you know, two hours, ten to two hours, maybe 15, two hours, 30 minutes to get to where we're going. And uh, he's got no clue where we're going. You know, I'm, <laughs> I know where I'm going. Uh, obviously, it's my family's house. Uh, my wife knows where we were going. She's sitting in the... Passenger. Passenger seat. Yeah. Dave's in the front seat. This is a F one fifty uh crew crew cab or whatever. And, you know, anyway, it's a four door F one fifty. I'm in the back seat and you know, I think it was it was a, uh, it was beer, I'm pretty sure. Well, we're we're, we're we're maybe an hour and a half into this ride and uh Dave misses the exit. And I had like just told him Beck is coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. And Dave misses the exit. I'm doing like 70. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, dude, you missed the exit. And he, he's like, man, I know where I'm going. And I'm like, no, you don't know where you're going. You've never been here. He's like, shut up. I was like, dude, I will come over. And I come over top of the seat and grab onto the steering wheel and I yank this steering wheel wait, so hard. We're going 70 miles per wait, hour. Before he does this, before he does this, he's back there and he's going about me missing the exit. And I'm like, dude, you crank the radio. <laughs> he reaches up and powers the radio off. And when I go to t snatch his hand, he reaches over. And that's when he grabs the wheel and just yanks the wheel. And I'm like, I will flip this over in the middle of the road. And I let go of that wheel. He gets it straight. And he turns around and looks at me and catches me with this decent jack. <laughs> boom. Right. Like, <laughs> boom. You hit him. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was pissed. And I was scared. I was so mad that I let go of the steering wheel, turned around and punched him in his face. Turned around and I punched him in his face. And then turn back around and grab the steering wheel, like like everything. Like that was like I knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, but no, he didn't. I didn't so, knock you out. What happened? So he, so so 
I, you know, I go back, here it is, now it's in my face, so I go back up against the seat, and as soon as my back hit the seat, I used that spring and came off and caught him, like, right behind his jaw. Woo! That decent crack. I was like, got him! You know? I was like, got him! That felt good. Did it really? At the time, yeah. Oh, man, right. my, my, man, my adrenaline was oh, going. I was, Mind you, I had just attempted to three of us. My adrenaline was pumping. Yeah, what I do? You had just attempted to survive being What but what did I do after you punched me? Okay, so <laughs> so I, I I don't recall if there were multiple blows thrown at that point. I think you hit me twice. Maybe something like that. And I turned around was, again and you scooted all the way back and cuz you yeah, knew I, I could only look a, for a yeah, second. Yeah, I wasn't going to take another one like that. So <laughs> he's like look, look, look so there, there's an exit coming and he's like, "Oh no. Oh no. You want to mm, so we, dude, we take this exit and mind you, hold up, mind you, people have seen this. I got no tin on my truck. <laughs> people are watching this fight on the interstate. And they're like following us. They follow us off the exit. Mm. I pull straight into the McDonald's that's right at the end of the exit. And as soon as I get in the parking lot, it's just like <laughs> cars are like <laughs> and just park to watch what's about to happen. We both roll barrel out. out. <laughs> we just we barrel out the truck. Out. I come around the back of the truck and I put my guard up and immediately when he put his hands up they just looked like freaking tarantula arms. He was just he's so long. And I knew that I was not going it's easy to punch somebody in the back seat. They can't get away. You know what I'm saying? Like so immediately I just ran up to him and I kind of like you know, we're drunk, so I'm like, well, if he did this, I know I would fall for it. You know, that's what I'm thinking. So I run up and I, like, flinch at him, and he goes to swing immediately. I duck, scoop him up, and dump him on his back in the middle of the parking lot. With his head in my chest. I swear he got in the air somehow. I, I and, jumped. And, and <laughs> went like that. He, like, dive bombed. Yeah, dude, it's straight into my chest, and it was... <laughs> Hey, I know that noise. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you feel after you let go of all that air? Oh, I'm deflated, probably. <laughs> I felt like, have you ever seen what a basketball looks like that's not inflated? <laughs> <laughs> looks like a looks like basketball. a salad bowl almost. <laughs> uh, just kind of dip. That's 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 how I felt. And you know, he he lands right on top of me, and then Maybe. you know he comes right down. And as soon as he comes down, I'm like, oh, got him again. He landed right on top. As soon as he landed on top, I legs, arms, moves, wrapped right around him, and I'm stretching him out again. And now I'm talking. I'm like, you've been here before. You've been here before. <laughs> hey, look. And I already knew it, too. Look, okay, so my wife is right there, and she's punching Get both him. of us. What are you doing? Boom, boom. She's laying into both of us, so like. I'm like, this is what I'm thinking. Terry, please let go of me so your wife will stop punching me in the face. And he's like, Dave, don't hit me because I'm about to let go of you so my wife will stop punching me in the face. You know, so we both are, he's like, and like pushes me away, I just back up. And, and I'm rolling out and I'm, I'm standing up looking. We're <sighs> winded again and then we're drunk so now we're crying. both crying. And yeah. then we're crying. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Why are you do this? I thought we were friends. Oh, God. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Sitting on the look, we're sitting, and mind you, there are people like observing this situation. And yeah. Devin's all crying too. So now all three of us, we go from slugging and attempting to really do bodily harm to each other. <laughs> yeah, there was no rules to, to this. No, one. to to just to hugging it out, you know, hugging it out, sitting on and, and we jumped right back in the truck, head about, I was like, don't miss an exit again. <laughs> <laughs> and look, the funny thing is, we get to this 4th of July weekend, we get there, we tell the story to the family, they're like, what the, you know, they're a little, like, is everything cool, is this going to happen, you know, numerous times, but it didn't, and we were both sore, hmm. Oh, complaining all weekend. Worst Worse than the toe, the chest, the, the bruised sternum. I mean, don't sneeze. Uh, <laughs> don't sneeze. You might piss yourself. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like that's the level that it was. And, and it was that way for a month, maybe, maybe longer. <laughs> it might have been longer than a month that I was like, 
day. What the? Why? Oh yeah, look. Why? This part of my face had a bruise. Yeah, that was a good I had a bruise here. But see, I hit him like right here. Yeah. So <clears throat> he didn't have. There was no bruising on his face. I had. I hit like the the was it Chris Farley jam? Like my face doesn't hurt. Like, <laughs> but right here, I feel like I look like Chris Farley did after he took the two by four to the side of the head. He's like, right? not not so much here or here, but like. Right here, <laughs> this area, you know, and the funny part though was when we leave, we get back to that McDonald's and we stop <laughs> to get something to eat for the ride. And I go in to order, and they're like, Hey, weren't you the guy that was fighting a week ago up here? I was like, Yeah, that was me. Can I get um, like six double cheeseburgers and a large iced tea, please? I just tried to like pretend, like, well, I'm like. So obviously the moral to the story was don't drink and drive. Absolutely. 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 Or miss exits. Yeah, don't you don't want to miss an exit. Don't miss ever miss an exit. exit. So it's almost like you guys have like a, a, a brotherly type of a thing. You know, you guys are really good friends. You get to fighting sometimes and they make for some hell of five stories to be telling. Well, that's how I feel, right? If we do get into a fight, I don't feel that... Any fight we get in could ruin the friendship that we have. That's how tight of a bond that we got. And it all stemmed from, you know, being in that cell for that long together. And, you know, I know everything about Terry. I know how he wipes his butt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean. <laughs> like, that's, I don't know what you're saying, actually. Actually, that's, that is. That's on there. That's, that's on there. That's for y'all. <laughs> so, um, it's just, it's. Too much invested in the friendship to let a freaking fight destroy it. You know, people get angry, people do stupid stuff, and we've done that to each other, and it is what it is. I want to ask one final thing as we wrap this up, and this is more for you, Terry, but with all of the trouble that you've been in in your life, uh, you know, you had a robbery charge, you served nine years for this, you've had multiple violations of probation, DUIs, things like that. Uh, what is life for you like now? Are you still uh, wrapped up in the BS or have you finally gotten yourself together? I've always been a hard-headed person, you know, always been hard-headed. I always learn the hard way. Th this last year for me has been just amazing, life-changing. Um, no, nah, I'm not wrapped up in any of the bullshit anymore. And talk to me about what made you realize that you wanted to change, what's helped you to change, and talk to me about what your life is like now. Well, my family, that's the big thing. That's what, that's what it came down to. Uh, this last time that I was uh, in jail and violated my probation. DUI, Which was how long ago? Uh, over a year, a year, oh, two years. This would have been two years ago because I ended up doing, I, I ended up getting a year from a violation. Um, I went into the jail, to the Virginia Beach City Jail, signed up for the, uh, the drug program that they have in there. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't, understand where my problems lie until I got into this program. These, these people that run this program are selfless. They, they are there, well, I mean, of course it's their job, but they are there for you at that time, you know? And my original motivation in signing up for this program was so that it would look good for the judge. Well, little did I know that it was what I needed. Um, and not that, you know, not, not that I was doing heavy drugs or, or into anything like that, but just the decisions that I was making, uh, as far as that went, they were, they, they were 100% selfish decisions and having my wife go through, my wife ended up going through, uh, due to me getting incarcerated, uh, and at that, we had just brought my mom down. My mom's a retired teacher, um, and she's she she did she doesn't have like a retirement. She's you know getting by on Social Security, which is a whole issue that I could go into, but I'm not. Uh, so we we go and, and, and bring her down, and she's an awesome lady. And I bring her down, and she's not down two weeks before I'm in jail. Uh, I was pretty much the breadwinner. Uh, my wife, uh, eleven-year-old son, um, my mom were uh, dependent upon you. Yeah, and 
and and going through that and knowing that my decision did not just hurt me. Because I, I, I always thought, like I said, I was selfish, man. I always thought that, you know, I'm only hurting me. I'm only hurting me. I know when I was a kid, I did, you know, I committed a crime against society. Uh, I was just hurting myself. And then to see, to see them go through, I mean, they had to live in a hotel, you know. It had it not been for friends that uh, I've established, uh, they would have been homeless, completely homeless. And my wife is a trooper, stuck with me. The whole time supported me while I was there was involved in what was going on and that that uh, that program the education that I got wasn't just it wasn't just a drug program where you go in and there you, you know this was a life learning program um, and the literature and just the people in general hearing people share their stories and finding the parallels you know to juxtapose between my my situation and theirs it, it, it woke me up, man, because, man, I'm looking at 70-year-old people, and I'm like, dude. That could be you. That can't be me, you know? But, yes, it could be me, but I was like, no, uh-uh. That can't be me. I got to live my life for my family. You know, I have to live my life for my family. And ever since, you know, ever since my, uh, my release, man, that's what I've been doing. And uh, I managed to somehow... Uh, Get pass a background check and get in for a, a, a really good job. major company, you know, and doing, you know, work just steady, steady, steady. And and look at you now. I mean, you've got a house, you got a beautiful home. Yeah. I mean, you two, have definitely two vehicles. You know, two, two years ago, I was I, I had nothing. My family was homeless, you know. So and uh, I, I was in jail for a year, um, roughly ten months and twenty one days, however much that was. And uh, so I've been out for a year and a few months now, and I went from, you know. Nothing to something. Nothing to something. And that was all, uh, it, it's all attributed to my family's love. And your love for them as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely.